Welcome everyone. This is the weekly jail call and we have Jan, myself, Michael, we have Michael C and Antrenig and we have a lot of news to share. So Michael C, go ahead and talk about XC. People were very positive on Twitter about your release news. What is new and what is coming? Right, so far I'm working on some uh, basic functionality wise things. Uh, I do not support RCTL or CPU as a yet, but there's a, a plan to implement those. But currently it's mostly working on supporting the more basic things like uh, Docker file, like stuff, gel file, and also things like a Docker Compose, I think, maybe called XC Compose or whatever. Um, yeah, so, so far that's a progress. Um, yeah. And so what expectations, as I've been kind of nudging with, can one have for using existing Docker profiles, be it as fancy as Nextcloud with Nifty Office yeah. integration and the uh, Collabora, et cetera, which is kind of my holy, holy grail when it comes to getting off of Google Docs for calls like this. Go ahead. Yeah, it really. Uh, oh, I will. I will. I'll probably need to push some files, change to GitHub uh, because of what Jan put there. So, basically, the idea is that uh, if you can run Docker image at all, depends on how well it's supported via the Linux uh, emulator. Uh, it really depends on what kind of system call and things like that. Uh, 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 the Docker image is using. Uh, if you have a Docker image that's pretty normal, that does not require some really special things, usually it should just work. For example, like uh, MariaDB just work. Uh, Nextcloud kind of work. I haven't dig super deep into how well it works. Um, but there are some surprise in uh, some more basic Docker content that, that does not work. For example, Nginx that requires IOU ring and things like that. But obviously, uh, although supporting Linux Docker container is like part of the feature, but it's not the main focus. The main focus is really that uh, for developers can build the FreeBSD containers and upload to any OCI compatible registry uh, that is like Azure or uh, Docker Hub, for example. And that's why for me, the priority is currently on building uh, uh, the gel file and like uh, XC compose kind of thing, such that you can kind of have a good way to just build out the image. Uh, yeah. Now, are you close enough to the spec that another jail tool like, I don't know, pot or something could re point at your same repos? Uh, define what it means by point the same repo. So that if you upload to a registry of images, yep. it could a different jail tool conceivably retrieve the same image without using XC. I actually, uh, since Yan has the source as well, I mean, you, you can actually see it does not, XC does not only compile XC, D and XC, there's a couple more utilities. Uh, I think I might have not uploaded that, but there is supposed to be a utilities that allows you to pull the OCI images. Uh, so it basically handle the OAuth things for you. Uh, I don't think, it, it might not be in the main repo because uh, I think there's some OAuth thing may depends on the uh, the credential file that XC depends on. But uh, the idea is that if you look under OCI UTIL, uh, that uh, create contains the uh, functions you need to pull the layers from uh, OCI registry and OCI tar exists as is a separate binary that can extract the layers uh, into basically instantiate uh, a route for other gel tubes to consume. So uh, yes, so the answer is that's positive, uh, oh. but I don't think I have get all the bits together yet. Sure, so, that's uh, all very exciting. Yep. Uh, another thing is quite exciting is that uh, you can actually use convert Bastel gels into a XC container, but without the base system, such that you can push a quite minimal uh, container on the, let's say on uh, Docker Hub, mm -hmm. and you can pull it down. But of course, when you run it, you have to mount the uh, base system, and yep. then you, you can just run the container directly. So uh, if you have existing Bastel gel, uh, it, it should be 
pretty straightforward to convert it into a container and uh, so if you have a bastille uh, file the equivalent of a docker file bastille file is a bit different uh, my focus is that when you have a real uh, in like a real bastille jail that means with this file system and everything you can convert mm -hmm. it directly because uh, I kind of have to write my own jail file because of the extra feature XC spring on, which I think they're super exciting. Um, but, but, but this exciting feature means like it requires some new syntax. Uh, so I kind of just write the parser and then write the thing for the jail file. Uh, so currently I don't have a direct support to Bastille file, but the easiest way is really that you just use the Bastille file to create a Bastille uh, jail. Yeah and then import it. Or you convert a file because it's most of the time these files are pretty simple. Yeah. So I, I have I have questions. Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me, by the way? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Great. So 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 uh, so uh, we wrote our own jail management utility because uh, you know not invented here syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, it's for you know it's for my company. So it was while we absolutely love Bastille, for example, when we came out, we really needed something that we have control over, and we mm -hmm. didn't want to do some kind of a fork for our features. Um, mm -hmm. So in Jailer, we have added uh, in the last release, I apologize for the motorcycles. People are very exciting in here. We don't hear um, it. No, you sound great. The noise canceling okay, is great. working. But someone's so, so, clicking so, like crazy. So we what? have our Jailer. Uh, we have our Jailer file, which uh, unlike other things like Bastille file and Docker file, it actually has a, it actually has a, a what do you call that? A uh, awk syntax. Uh, like like detrace ish syntax for some reason we decided. Okay. Uh, so and it, it's been working okay. So here here where my 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 question arises. I was very fascinated with your. I think it was called OCI tar in your repository, uh, written mm -hmm. in Rust. So uh, do you think is is that written as a library or a utility? Because what I would love to see is. Uh, if I can run a single command pointing to a registry and a, uh, you know, a, a image and its own version and get the root FS out of it. Because there are a lot of tools that can do like import export, but they don't bring the root FS. They bring that whole overlay thing, the Docker thing. Uh, that's my first question. Because okay, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, I can answer the first question first. Uh, so OCI actually... It is trying to be Unix-ish, so it do one thing only, which is taking the uh, overlay FS layers and mm -hmm. make them into a single uh, file system. Mm -hmm. And the way you work is that you take it in sequence and then you run OCI type extract to a directory. Okay. Uh, so let's say you have five layers, you run it five times and extract to this directory, and then you will handle things like the YL files and like that for you. Okay. Um, uh, and then in terms of pulling the layers, uh, Right now, uh, I just double check. I don't have. Uh, I will need yeah, the actual pull the right now. Meet up, meet up. But, um, but, um, yeah, you, you, but there's many ways you can pull the layers and then you can uh, instantiate them to a certain directory and then now you have the entire root FS. So, how do you deal with multiple instances of the same um, image? Uh, you don't really need to care about that uh, because if, if your purpose is to instantiate them, like kind of like make them into a root FS, then each image has a different checksum, right? So they, they technically represent a different root FS. So you do, because the image name and the, the image ripple and tag are, are quite literally just a tag. It just kind of alias to this like image file and the image file points to this thing called a root FS and that thing has its own thing. In OCI, it's called the layer chain ID. Uh, quite literally, layer chain ID is a Markov chain getting all the diff ID together. Layer so, what ID? Uh, layer something ID? Uh, it's, they're, they're called chain ID, CJI chain. It's like you have a chain of diff IDs, so it combined together, you have a chain ID. So Brain? I can... Uh, a uh, train, train. Did I spell that right? Because I'm, I'm just I use the chat. -E yeah, use the chat. I'm trying to get that right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, chain. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
So, so, so uh, that I was wondering, and this is more like a sideload question, mm -hmm. which is uh, since you wrote OCI tar, and I, I, I had a look at the code, but I'm not very uh, good at Rust yet. But um, based on your experience, do you think it's actually possible to build an OCI tar using only FreeBSD based tools and Flua? Because that would be like a dream goal is like having a single Flua script that would do all of that instead of having the whole Rust compiler to compile OCI tar. I think OCI tar does not depend on many things because what Okay, it does depends on SHA-2, which is a is a like a Rust native Craig that do the checksum. Because another thing really cool about OCI tar is that when you extract the image or create the image, it actually create the checksum from the of the original tar as well as the checksum from the uh, archive, like the compressed one in in one I iteration. See. So that's the reason why it depends on the SHA library but other than that it shouldn't depends on other libraries because uh, essentially what it does is that it inspect the task stream and then it it basically before passing the task stream down to bsd tar by block you can read the block ahead and say hold on a second this is a yl file i should delete some file instead of passing down to the downstream uh, bsd tar to do the extraction uh so that's essentially or, or, yeah essentially that's all the thing it does there's also like uh uh two more library uh, one more library is for dealing with um gzip uh the other one is the uh c standard uh compression thing uh as well as the outputs i don't know why i have this uh, json thing but maybe at some um, point i was designing it should output json so just, other than that you know that's all the dependency it needs yep you can pass a, a file name to BSD tar uh, called ex under the exclude from, and then it takes oh, a file that, name to a, yeah, a file different. of exclusion patterns. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I think uh, this it only reads it once. So you can actually use uh, either some kind of redirection if you have a FDesk FS mounted. Yeah, so but that is not that. exactly the issue. The issue is with YL files, mm -hmm. you actually need to remove the file existing in the uh, in the file system. Oh. So let's say if they have a .wh dot mm -hmm. like an ABCDE, you actually need to remove the ABCDE file okay. from, from the layer. And that's why it has to do this pre-processing. Okay. So uh, exclusions won't work, you say. Two pro, uh, yeah. step process where you build up the list of whiteout files and then go over and extract only what you want to keep from each layer? Uh, no, it's kind of one step process. So th the way yeah. TAR works is that if it's formatted by multiple uh, 512 bytes blocks, what XC does is that it actually read each 512 uh, bytes block. And when it sees a YL file, it just does not pass that entire block down to BSD TAR. So BSD TAR never see that block. But instead, okay. XC will actually read the block and delete the file for you. Wait, you're rewriting the task stream to omit the entries? Mm -hmm. And you also perform the deletion by uh, OCI itself. Okay. So the benefit is kind of like my, a bit by OCD performance. The benefit is that you can actually do the entire thing in one sing single iteration. Uh, you can. You, you, you only need to read the archive one time and you, you, you have calculated the mm -hmm. div ID, you have calculated the archive ID, and you also uh, extract all the files as well, uh, as well as deleting all the files. So. Um, so so uh, uh, here's another question, and this is coming from an interop point of view. Yep. So now we have Bastille and Pot and XC and Jailer. And if anyone remembers any other names, please let you know, add to the list. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the interesting parts is that uh, from a free BSD perspective, as long as there is the root file system, you know, yeah. any jail mm -hmm. manager can run anything. But, right. uh, you know, now I created my Jailer file. Bastille has the Bastille file and, uh, uh, yeah. you know, Pot has so. Uh, from a from a jail vendor point of view, uh, 
uh, how do you see, like, should we create something like OJI, you know, Open Jail Initiative, where, because <laughs> our requirements is a lot different than, you know, Docker's, right? We have RCTL, yeah. we have, we have Jail, uh, sorry, ZFS, uh, uh, the, the delegations, we can have more awesome things like CPU pinning and, and the list goes on basically, you know? So uh, do, how do you look at that? Or do you even look at that? Because it's, it's not a priority for us right now, I'll be honest with you, but I would love when we're developing to have that in mind. Yeah, I have a really confident feeling about that because I think if jail exists as like a, that's multi-layer of gels, right? The base layer is like the gel framework on FreeBSD itself. And then there's other layers, which is everyone is doing is try to have a user-friendly way to use gel as a framework. Uh, I mean, use gel as a functionality. Uh, I think gel is kind of like primitive and what we are trying to do, uh, pe people using gel trying to do different things are not exactly the same. For example, if you look at uh, especially Bastel and maybe like IO Cage. The, the whole idea is that I create these virtual hosts and manage them almost like virtual machine. And I'm going to reuse them. They're going to have states, but I can run them like I'm running a normal jail. But the OCI and then the Docker or container thing kind of use it differently. It, it's kind of like more higher scale or DevOps environment that, oh, I need to run this version of software. It, it's kind of like using it as like a new version of Elf in, in some way to say, this is how I want to run my application. It does not contain state. And every single time I run it, they have new states. So it's more like a dot out without dynamic linking. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's complicated. Uh, depends on what you want to do with it. And I think uh, in terms of like, say, jail format or something that we can share, uh, to be honest with you, currently I can't really think of anything. I do think like, um, yeah, I really can't say anything because to be honest, the OCI is not that bad. The OCI standard just say like, th this is like a chasm of the refile system and then these other commands you can run inside. So it is quite generic enough. We just need to figure out how to add more like uh, FreeBSC specific attribute to it. Uh, yeah. But it is kind of funny when I'm saying that because I use a different format than the OCI because I try to provide a bit more functionality than the OCI does. Uh, so for example, on XC, if you're missing a required environment variables, uh, XC will actually tell you you're missing that, which you cannot do it with OCI. Um, yeah, I think it's still an open question. I, I don't have a good way to figure out uh, how exactly we should deal with this divergency within the FreeBSD ecosystem, like everyone have their jail framework. So, so does but, OCI but, not have some little uh, add-on parameter, like put your private stuff here and you, you can, we'll ignore it? You can it? do a lot of labeling, but uh, A, is not very efficient. And um, yeah, you can totally do that. I mean, okay. that, that's what Sonaris does. Like you just add some custom attribute there, but like how efficient it is, is another story in fact, that is something I was recently thinking about it as well. I was thinking maybe, because right now, XC can take an OCI config file, uh, image config files, convert it to the native one. But I'm thinking maybe I can also implement the reverse. So I can take an XC config file and kind of reverse it lossly into a OCI config file, but storing the actual original XC config file somewhere using the attributes. That is some way that also works. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, this must be a really long answer for- That's exactly what we're after question. because this is a, one, exciting, two- That's a good one. Hitting all the right points, like, you know, Antrenig having gone down a similar road with Jailer and we've all written yes. of some kind. Well, let's, yeah, you know- I think, I think Jailer is just a really nice primitive and everyone just try to use it a different way, but that's fine because you need different things. Yeah. Um, so it's not wrong to have like, different two specifically built for different purpose. Uh, it's it just like when you put them together, it just call everything like this is a jail and that is where the uh, all the confusion kicks in, right? Because it is kind of like, this is the right, this is like the only right way to use all. And that sounds really weird to me. Right. So um, yeah. 
And this gets yeah, full circle to my question of that. if we have an ecosystem of, or repo, you name it, of appliances ready to go, if each person has their own approach and favorite tool, can we at least share some of that? That, that so repo, yeah, so much. so I was I was Go talking ahead, with uh, I was talking with AppGale guys. Mm -hmm. uh, they are also a very nice utility, and they're working very hard on the templating. Like the Bastille stuff on their uh, images side is mostly like home server stuff, like you know Nextcloud and mm -hmm. and and stuff like that. But but AppGale guys, they implemented some awesome things, like um, a, a SOC, a security operation center inside of jails. You know, it has like elastic and stuff like that. And we were talking about like, can we implement a, like a shim layer between like jailer file and app jail and Bastille and stuff like that. One of the common ideas was, hey, what if we like write a tool, uh, maybe in a, in, a, in a normal programming language that is like, you know, ideally part of FreeBSD base where mm -hmm. the authors like, you know, you and me and everyone else would go in there and we would have like our own primitives, less or so, you know? Um, well, that's kind of reinventing. The, I have thought about that, but when I think deeper about it, it's kind of like reinventing OCI. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 at so, that so point, I'm like, OGI. Oh, I'm not sure OGI. if you just, should just use OCI. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I love the idea. Like, 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 if you look at, for example, at, at RSS, right? Like, RSS has namespaces for podcasts, right? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if if we can just use OCI's uh, namespaces for FreeBSD stuff and just be done with that. You know, it's it's, it's uh, th that might be like the easiest way to solve the, this this problem. Yeah, I think that could solve part of it, but I think a lot of the issue we would otherwise encounter in this situation is already solved by OCI. So for example, like what is a correct way you can really identify a root file system? Like that is a that is a hard problem because your things like your root file system exists as a directory and there's many objects inside. So uh, OCI kind of solved that problem by saying, okay, you know what? Because like, it doesn't matter how your thing evolved, but in the beginning, like this is the checksum of the initial state. So this is the root file system. Uh, so, so this part of the aspect is kind of already solved. Uh, yeah, I think we can, technically we can just add custom attributes to OCI. And the funny thing about OCI is that the registry doesn't care about those attributes. Uh, so you can add as much as possible. Um, and it should just work. Um, the problem with that is that then everyone need to have, a capa have the capability to work with OCI and then let's say now this is how we identify as a root file system and how do we get there from zero to have an actually working file system, right? So that is the hard part of the problem. Uh, that's why for me on AC is focused a lot more on the distribution side to be able to reuse the um, uh, OCI registry for this purpose. Yeah. So, Michael, I think we need like a jails vendors call at this point. We're okay. on it, buddy. We're on it. We're on it. So this is the call. <laughs> Let's not get too hung up on those details because, yes, um, if we do have a few emerging vendors, we should, yeah, maybe focus on them for a given call. But um, these are all the correct questions. And it, it's, I think just the fact that we're vocalizing them is half the battle. For example, do like we've, you, you in a way answer my question there? Do we use at custom attributes within OCI, which solves it in one way, but then great point that suddenly okay everyone has to use OCI. It's like why the heck would we do that? We have we have our own thing that we've used for years. It works. So let's keep focusing on what is absolutely common, such as you know all of Jamie's wonderful work and includes on keeping jail as the most friendly in kernel resources to all of these efforts and may a thousand flowers bloom. Um, um, go ahead, Jan. I think you're setting uh, yourself or at least the proposed project up for failure because it doesn't belong in the kernel. Well, um, this kind well, of thing, I mean keeping I jail it, as it a resource in all its forms yeah, is like, compatible uh, with all this. Go ahead. Yeah, that's a jail as a primitive thing live in primitive. the kernel, but that's also like a Jail as what people use it and think it's as jail. Exactly. So they're, that's they're both called jail, and that, that's the confusing part. Uh, Correct. 
exactly the mechanism inside the kernel has been almost completely done from since free is the eight something when we got the extended jail properties and multiple addresses and so on so uh, what's missing is the uh, is really opinionated tooling to make it easy to get at mind share and so that not everyone has to see the components and build his own wheel Mm -hmm. It's not yes. that people are reinventing the wheel, it's really that the wheel is there, but now build your own. Yeah, maybe I can share the screen. I can show you some. When sure. I build the things, uh, I absolutely have thought about like not just making XCSXC, but also like make other people can use the work. Uh, how do I share screen on this thing? Uh, green uh, button at the bottom, share screen should be a little arrow pointing up uh, i'm using the safari so maybe that's why i cannot see it uh oh purely a web connection to zoom yeah okay that might have limitations as jamie right. discovered he couldn't adjust audio levels <laughs> yeah maybe eventually i need to rejoin with other browsers or something but the idea is that under the xc repo there are multiple tools that's like uh, the oci cat config that's the oci cat manifest and those are the tools you can already use uh, to, to basically get the fetch the information from a, a OCI registry. So if other gel tools want to use that as a base to uh, say fetch layers or fetch things from OCI, you, you can just use those utilities. Uh, you should just find, and probably I can add the functionality to pull the layers back, uh, to pull the layers to local, uh, that probably has some issue with how to deal with the uh, different credential for different registry correctly. Uh, but I can make a prototype one that you can use it to pull the images or layers. Then, you know, then Bastel or like Port or AppGel, they can both use OCI to use it as a mean to distribute the, um, the, the gels. Uh, I think that's a way that will work. Um, yeah. Did you call that cat config from OCI? It's a, when you, when you build the entire thing, you, uh, you actually build a couple of binaries and one of the binaries is OCI dash cat dash config. And then the other one is called OCI dash cat dash uh, manifest. So the purpose of those tools is that they can pull the manifest and the uh, config from, uh, OCI registry, like Docker Hub. Okay, check my spelling on the Docker in the chat, but um, okay, uh, not just OCI cat config. So I, I probably say it wrong. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so and that brings up Antonik's point that, like, for example, how can we uh, handle? You know, libfetch is amazing. How could we handle, for example, white uh, whiteout files in tar in an elegant way that others can use without it being jail specific, XC specific, etc. Currently, I just use the I just use a standard that OCI is using. I mean, it's, okay. it's not perfect, but but it works, and it's like if technically it's, it's already a solution. I don't necessarily think we should reinvent the wheel there. No, absolutely uh, not. It's not really a you know not invented here problem. You know, uh, I specifically try to avoid the not invented here problem. Uh, so I, I think we can just reuse many things that. OCI is already using. I think that's fine. Um, yeah. Amen. Uh, did Plus, you want to you go ahead? Receive config that's straight and route that's straight and all kind of things that's already committed base. So whatever I can, I feel that is beneficial for everyone. I kind of just take them already and convert to base and I just push to base. For example, the OXC, the non public one, actually use the rescue if config to configure the, um, uh, the IP address of a VNet gel, but, but, but don't have to co uh, copy itself into the VNet gel. The way it works is that it opened the rescue if config as an FD file descriptor, and then it access, and then it entered the gel, and then it used the uh, fexec to exact the um, FD to mm. actually configure the, uh, 
the IP address in the jail, right? But so now you're we have already the... using fxec ve. What? Excuse me. Are you already using uh, the fxec uh, fv system call to? Yeah. Exec? Earlier, I already used that because the West one is a steadily compiled one, so it does not require the dynamic linker. Uh, uh, if you open the normal if config, once mm -hmm. you accept it in the jail. Now the if config cannot find the libraries, right? But if um, there is a solution to that, yeah, but, but it doesn't I, matter. I've been now, playing with it. Uh, I haven't finished this, but I found out that through environment variables you can uh, pass the runtime linker an environment variable containing a colon separated list of file descriptors to directories containing shared libraries. Mm -hmm. That way you can have a fork a process, have it exec into the linker and the fork pro child process will have inherited the directories from outside the jail. So, so that basically when you open that, that means it's, it's, it cached the dir end in the uh, process already. So it doesn't have to open it again. Is that what it means? No, you can have the runtime linker for the process to be injected into a jail, open as a mm -hmm. file descriptor, and then run the, at least uh, I suspect that it should work. And I haven't found the time to finish our proof of concept, but all the documentation tells me it should be possible to use the runtime linker to tell it that to take the image to be executed from one file descriptor and the uh, linker directories from a list of file descriptors to directories mm -hmm. so that you can inject all the capabilities and no longer use the file system for linking as a mm -hmm. namespace. But uh, the features were implementing to, to support runtime linking inside a Capsicum sandbox. Mm -hmm. And that way, for example, you, the most extreme case would be having an empty jail directory and still linking a process inside the jail. Yeah, that's Runtime cool. Uh, I, I've done it with jail with FXF, but once I find it just much easier to commit to base, I just stop there. Mm -hmm. So that, that's an interesting one. Yeah, but, but the base idea is that, you know, um, many the thing XC find that so, everyone can benefit already. You know, I try my best to commit to the base and probably mm -hmm. other vendor can do the same. So, uh, yeah. The idea here is for me that I wanted to have a way to basically have a server running and then have a client send a bunch of file descriptors over Unix socket, like the open file descriptors for the process and the linker directories and so on. Yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, you might be very interested in looking at how XC does exactly. uh, create so. containers because mm -hmm. unlike Docker, where you pass a path, to the container, uh, to the to the daemon, and the daemon mounts mm -hmm. the uh, directories and files to the uh, container. XC mm -hmm. actually do it in reverse. XC actually ask the client to open the file first and mm -hmm. send the descriptor over. Yeah, that's a lot cleaner uh, because so, all the descriptors uh, are capabilities. Yeah, so you can actually it's actually pretty capsic. Uh, XC is pretty capsicum friendly. I have a way to deal with the directory as well. I'm just too lazy to implement it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I didn't do it for like directory, but uh, it is pretty easy fix. But otherwise, XC actually takes the files as a descriptor and send around. So you might be really happy about how XC does that. Probably. Yep. So um, yeah, we're kind of, the, where, where were we? I kind of get lost. Uh, that covers it quite well. You did mention wanting to say pin jails to efficiency cores. Is there anything to discuss there at this point, or is that pretty cutting it's really edge? A side effect because um, I haven't implemented the LCTL layers yet because I want to get the more functional things done. Sure. But the idea is that once you use like uh, XCA to run the containers, then it's pretty trivial to use CPU set and pin them to a specific CPU, and that CPU can be efficiently called. So you can basically say, uh, I just ping this group of jails to this efficiency call and call it a day. So I don't know, maybe your unbound is only going to run on efficiency call, things like that. Okay. 
And thank you, Michael, for the Occam BSD pull request. You caught something I overlooked. And do you have any questions regarding that approach with build options? Uh, yes. Uh, do you know if there's a build option that builds a minimum uh, free BSD user land, but with PKG? Uh, simply exclude PKG. So all of my config files, uh, let me take a look here. Uh, ba -ba 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 man, sys source source.conf. There should be a package one. Mm -hmm. uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, okay. so because I sometimes I just use the boot only image, the 17 map image as my base system. Yep. Uh, because that makes things fast, but I would love to have a base that I can actually use PKG so I can build other containers on top of that. I suspect just exclude the without PKG bootstrap and the whole notion of excluding everything and adding back is can be hard to wrap one's head around when you first take a look at it. So just keep your questions coming, but there oh, is specifically the without PKG bootstrap option. Gotcha. Yes, Jan. Or just uh, use, <laughs> uh, use package base. That's a perfect segue. So Jan, it sounds like you got package base working with jails. Uh, tell us more and something about vendors.com. Um, I'm trying to use it with base right now. I've, so far, I've only had the idea and made sure that I can use it to on an empty directory, which is the important part. And give me a moment. Do you want to share still, something? Maybe. <laughs> so I'd love to see the basic syntax just to get others trying it. Exactly what I'm working with right now. Okay. Um, and to confirm, this is with the completely stock package base. It's not relying on a third party. Oh, uh, it's self-compiled with package base, but basically I built my own repository from the tooling which is available in base. Okay. No changes, just build me, just type make packages. So the command you require to build it is make packages. And the build files know how, so the make files know how to do it. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to share? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> So can you hear me? Yep. So it just withdrawing. And we briefly had two logins from here, which is fine. Oh, I didn't realize he's gone. Oh. Yeah. Hundred X stepped away. Yep. I see. He's on probably <laughs> under way somewhere. Okay, so that works. Yeah. Um, right now it's installing the tests. That's something don't have to. Okay, let's see. What else? Are either of you headed to Portugal? That's the plan. I haven't booked oh. yet, but that's for all the reasons. And Michael? Yep. I'm a speaker, would, so I kind of have to. Likewise, I kind of got a book too. Uh, would XC be a good BeehiveCon topic? Don't be fooled by the name BeehiveCon. It's pretty wide open on 
virtualization of container uh, code? I think, I think maybe. I mean, that could be a, a good one, I guess. Oh. I'm just I'm not like to... exactly sure when I will arrive. So. OK, so it's the Friday before the uh, event. So it's the second of the two uh, tutorial and dev summit days. OK. So yeah, make a note of that and get there. Okay. Uh, if our future employee that doesn't have me started yet, then uh... and Fossey in Portland went very well. Thank you very much. It's it was exciting, and we had Deb from the foundation with uh, Andrew, and a bunch of us gave talks with the BSD track. Hmm. Jan, how's that coming? Um, probably a minute of two. Um, and so, where does one start with package space? With a package manu manual page or uh, with elsewhere? The SSC or something or release seven? OK, let's take a look. Uh, seven. So let's see if it starts. Oh, I probably want to set some inherit. Yeah. Hmm, by the way, if that's what you're going to talk to Alan, uh, that's a really nice feature if we can hide some data set on side of us. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Part um, of XC's compli uh, complication right now is that I just try to do whatever I can to make uh, make me have less ISO. Uh, that's a that's the only reason like the caching thing is not really there yet because I really don't want to pollute my service data set to contain like hundreds of uh, entries. Uh, so that that would that's going to be something really helpful to have to have uh, something to hide it away. Unmount a data set or hide it in what regard or file level? No, just just hide it as in set of S list. That's it. <laughs> it. It should be a pretty trivial one why by setting you... an attribute. Why because you... when you have like different layers, you might have let's say 50 to 55 data set with really, really long name. And you don't every time you type set of S list, you see nothing. You, you can't see you are just going to be overwhelmed by all the uh, extra data sets. That's why. What would that be? Just a parameter to just say, don't list me when you list, which I admit when looking at old snapshots, if I could say, I only want to see the most recent three without having to like post process it. I'm thinking something even simple, just like this data set, just maybe have one attribute. And when you do set of S list, just don't list the data set with that attribute unless you do a dash A or something. Interesting. Yeah, I think I think Alan also interested in this feature, uh, but I think we're going to have like more demand when we step more deeper into this container land. Um, the question is, which can you get meaningful names, or do you have to use uh, Merkle digest uh, or checksums or whatever? Because if you set the check some name as the set of data set name, it makes the entire logic much more efficient. It does. Because you don't have to step into each data set and try to list its property. Mm -hmm. So you is, is essentially reduce the low by almost an order of magnitude. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Because it's O-N to go through all the ch children in the data set. It is. But that's an O and other M for each property to look through each property mm -hmm. in that data set. So. Uh, yeah. OK, so embedding the hash in the name makes a lot of sense. Technically, I agree just that having the other way around would be nicer for humans, but this is supposed to be fully automated and not. Yeah, the problem is set of as list is really designed for human. <laughs> so. So it doesn't make sense to have it not work well for humans. 
is what I feel like. So let's see. Well, and Allen and Company is working on JSON output for what it's worth, but at least it's mm -hmm. machine readable aware. So. Uh, uh, that was. And I also probably need some Poodry facility that builds with minimum, like build the packages without all the documents, examples, and debug symbols. Uh, because let's say I was, I, I make a container that with Python, and that thing basically just blows up in size because all the examples and debug symbols and things like that. So it would be nice to have like a slim poodery repo to pull image. I mean to pull so, packages. What do, 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 do. see that works up? Uh, What's the host name? Yes. Okay. Another cool thing we can do is to um make it possible to retrieve the file path from the file descriptor. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we can kind of do that, but that's really a hacky way. That's kind of taking from the page cache. But right now, because how XC work is that when you try to copy a file into the container, the client has to open the file first and mm -hmm. send the file descriptor over. This is a feature, not a bug. But the problem mm -hmm. is like then the potential path name is going to be lost. Uh, mm -hmm. So it would be nice to be able to retrieve the path name. So it's much it's nicer just, to say. The problem uh, is that the kernel doesn't file. really have a guaranteed way to always remember this. I know. I know. Potentially the file has been, at most it could preserve the path, the absolute path used to do, oh, does the kernel even always map the relative path? So the path, Pass to the open system call could be preserved, but it could have been unlinked uh, and yeah, it can be hard relinked, links, so. which is even yeah, worse. Well, I know, but it's like a basic one is, is fine, you know. Yeah. But or you I mean, can have you the can do it from the get the K kernel for info the path or is the very name painful. for the file descriptor. Mm -hmm which isn't the same as a path, really. But mm -hmm. so let's see how long this takes. Oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, You're uh, still spinning that up? Yep. Okay. Yeah, good place to use XC. Oh, my jail is a bit too dumped down, uh, but the startup time is nice. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Ready when you are. Yep. Mount uh, dot defs. So, see. Are you close or do you want to save this for maybe another uh, call? Not, yeah. I have the jail working. Okay. So let's share my screen. Let it rip. Can you see a huge terminal window? Uh, yes. And if you can, share it out at HD resolution. 
if possible. No, I can't really, but I can approximate. That's cool. No, it, it'll, it'll the aspect ratio. inherit it. Okay, go ahead. So uh, what I did? Yeah, the font is really small. Okay, let me... Uh, I like small fonts and I have a 4K display, so... Hmm. Uh, yeah, if that can get bigger, the the text in back is not so bad, but the just the console is tiny. Oh wait, do are you seeing my full screen? Uh, I'm seeing your full screen. Yes, we are. Okay, that explains why. Uh, okay. Shares. Uh, I didn't want to share the full screen. I only wanted to share the terminal window. Uh, okay. There we go. Thank you. Much better. <laughs> okay, that's. Yeah. Um. Not you can. So what I did here is I, I added a domain, okay, to then set the common path of, based on the jail name, combine the domain and jail name to form the host name, to declare which repository on the host to use, and a nasty variable containing a shell here doc uh, with all the packages I want, because there aren't no meta packages collecting FreeBSD base packages into useful sets. And then the prepare is make sure there's a directory for the jail. So let's just uh, run this from scratch. GLS. Okay. Yeah, I know that makes sense. So what happens because some files in the base system are annotated with the system immutable flag. Uh, yep. I can't just wipe it. No, I can't. So let's start the jail. And it's installing FreeBSD 13 from my- On jail start as a- As a prepare- pre as, as a prepare step, exactly. Wow, okay. That just make sure the latest version of these packages is installed on prepare. It's just an experiment. Mm. It's not an, a deployment recommendation. So now, for example, the tests probably don't have to be installed, but I, and are slow to install because there's, there's lots of tiny files, lots of little regression tests. And it's just why it's so slow. And to uh, tell you how I created the jail packages, which are installing this tab here, um, I let's see. Do I even have? No, I don't have nothing of the sort. So I just wanted to use in my sources and said, oh, it's, uh, yeah, make package, which builds the packages for kernel and world. And then you have later, whenever this command finishes here, So I did this once before the patch was uh, released and then for the first patch and you get a sim link, but you don't want to do it locally on every host. So let's see how we can make it available. This is done in my test setup. You don't it up. Okay. So uh, I fetch my packages via SSH, even on the system hosting the repository, because it's fast enough not to matter. Given that the slow part is. Uh, oh, and the, yeah. can I have a quick question if you don't mind? 
Yeah, sure. Uh, what happens if like the system you try to install it from does not have SSH in that case? Can it put uh, like this... point to absolute path? So first of all, the SSH is running on the jail host, not inside the jail. So I, I kind of would be surprised if you lack SSH mm. on your jail host, not inside a stripped down jail. Okay. But uh, you can use whatever PKG supports. So this can be a local directory. It can be a TCP server. It can be an HTTP or HTTPS server. Um, yeah, these are the common. So the latest package release, 1.20, we replaced libfetch with libcurl for performance reasons because mm -hmm. libcurl uh, is a lot faster on high latency connections by default. Mm -hmm. Because libfetch doesn't do enough pipelining and doesn't configure and a big. If I remember correctly, libfetch is not even address safe. So mm -hmm. you think so, libfetch is not lib, uh, thread safe? Yeah, the last time I checked, is using a lot of Google variables. So mm -hmm. that that prevents me to use libfetch to sure. uh, integrate to exe directly instead of but, using the rest of the instead. For libpkg, yeah. okay. Now here we have an SSH URL. So I have the user pkg for packages. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> oh, yeah. So your normal stripped down disable password and so on, just on a high port. Okay, now anyone bothering to see this knows on which port to annoy my SSHD, but still. And I have enabled SSH certificate authorities and have just signed a special purpose. Um, Certificate with a force command. So this SSH uh, certificate as signed by the, the certificate authority is only trusted to execute this one command as the user mm -hmm. on the host system. And the, the PKG SSH command uses Capsicum to lock itself into a directory and then has a very simple line-based protocol where you tell it the uh, end time and path. And if the end time of a file is uh, newer than the one you provided, it's an error. So basically give me a file no newer than this so that uh, if the file is updated, uh, you're not getting a mishmash. Mm -hmm. And it's there, it just speaks uh, over standard IO. So this server is barely as abusing SSH as a secure INET D for this trivial server. Of course, there's no reason why you have to use uh, uh, even uh, to even have to authenticate, you could run this command uh, on a public server, allowing everyone to log in, because it's a command running inside Capsicum as a dedicated user. Yeah, so it's already pretty secure and minimal attack surface because the protocol is really trivial and. Before it ever you, uh, looks at the user input, it has already locked itself uh, in using Capsicum. Oop, what just happened? I turned off my video. I caught myself oh. yawning. Okay, no problem. Uh, I was just surprised because suddenly the Zoom window disappeared because the last camera was turned off. Um, so, um, yeah. So it builds to user objects, user source repo, is that correct? Exactly. So okay. and then you share that the... out this way. Sorry? You're sharing that out to the to your Yes, I'm sharing this out to jails this way. Anyone with such a certificate. Okay. 
oh, the private key belonging to the certificate and the certificate, yeah. So it's in this case, it's this host fetching packages from this host, which is why I use, this is a naming scheme I use for my key IDs. Okay, can you Doesn't show us that, that pre-command to get us from point A to point B? Which pre-command? Pre, the jail pre-executive oh, command, right, which sure. does the installation. It sounds like there's the heavy lifting. It does. It's this oh, I... one here. Okay, cool. Uh... Um, it starts with an X arcs because the ver last variable is a here doc string. So it mm. responds to this. Yep. Because it's the easiest way to write it within the existing jail syntax. It just reads easier, I think. Could you yeah. flip back to that? Doc, as it the yes, thank you. Uh, cool. Yeah, this is so it's the first time I played with it, and it as a way to manage jails instead of. And let's see how long it takes to restart the jail. Okay. Okay, the jail has stopped. Done. So maybe I can leave it in if, um, if I trust the repository to contain what I expect it to contain. And let's see. So this is the size of the jail created this way. Okay, and that was without without uh, basically correct. without uh, debug symbols, uh, de development headers like, uh, and without Clang uh, LLD and uh, so without linker debugger and so on. But it's basically what you need to run software. So if so, you do, how do you exclude things? Was build options or a different? No, I, I just didn't packages. install the, the packages. It's how do oh, you? Oh, so, okay. But how do you, can you build base, can build package base without building everything? Does it respect build options or do you have to build Clang but not It does, Clang? but then you get a, you can't use one repository for different jails. Correct. Oh, right. uh, yeah, so you'd have to keep track. If I now that. want to redefine what it means to be this kind of jail, yep. I could just let's see a I have a problem on a, this jail and I want to install the debugger or the compiler. Sure. Uh, it's just one package install away and one package delete uh, gets rid of it again. Nice. So Except for the time needed to build the um, the packages yep. once per FreeBSD uh, security fix, yep. you don't have to um, strip down your package repository. You can instead just choose not to install packages. For example, I did don't have to install Beehive, the Hyper-V tools. Uh, Maybe I don't care about, uh, no, I probably do care about D what, but I can't use it, but, or D-Trace, uh, yep. other tool, or ZFS tooling inside a non-ZFS delegated jail. So, that, or what else, what I maybe you want to get rid of. ACPI, definitely useless. All the Geom, Gate stuff. Um, host AP, yep. D maybe depending, but unless it's a do you really want to run the access point in your jail? Right, okay. <laughs> we are at a what is it? A, a moose jaw, yeah, an hour and a half. So, can you tell me about that vendors.com file in jail? Oh, um, So um, as you can see here, the FreeBSD uh, 
defaults uh, for rc.conf where the default values which services are enabled by default are defined. Yeah. So even if you have no rc.conf and with check if there's a defaults vendor.conf and if so, uh, just source it in. So if you can just drop something here in this file and it will basically override the defaults for BST ships with. So Got that it. you don't have to deal with merging rc.conf uh, Yeah. Oh. And then. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, it's quiet. So that works as well. Just check. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Well, cool. And yep. I dropped the link to the script. Yeah. Is that going? To, is it going to canonically stay in a gist, or do you have a plan? Yeah, it's to... going to uh, get. When I'm awake, I have to read it to make sure that all the log messages are actually somewhat understandable and so on, because. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not going to delete that just uh, if you want to reference it, but I want to go over it. Oh, it is in the dark. Um, that said, anything else at this time? Will I see either of you on the open ZFS call tomorrow? Probably. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe. Understood. Okay. Regarding Michael, ZFS, are you receiving announcements and do you or do you not want to receive them? Hmm? What are announcement? You, are you receiving announcements to the ZFS call? I think so, but I don't know when is it? It's tomorrow at 10 a.m. same time, same uh, slot as this. Okay. Anyhow, so, uh, um, go ahead. Regarding overlays and ZFS, uh, which may be interesting to Michael, what I've done here uh, is I've come up with a quite crazy setup where basically I, I take the lower layer, in this case, on the, I only have two layers. Uh, well, I kind of have three layers, basically. I have the base system, the application, and then the instance state. So basically the volumes. Uh -huh. And all of that expressed in a jail.conf. And the interesting part uh, which uses uh, ZFS trickery is how to preserve a state if you want to replace a clone. Uh, so what I'm doing there is I move the um, clone by renaming it and then create a new a read-only clone from the immutable underlay, in this case, the base system or the package. And afterward, I then rename only the child data sets back in place. And this way I can, by re renaming the right subtrees out of the way and building up a new a tree out of the existing data sets, I can preserve, for example, my config files or my home path or something, despite its parent being a read-only clone of a data set I want to break this inheritance chain. Hmm. Okay. And that's possible by using rename to reassemble yeah, but super simple example syntax of those steps? No, it's not a simple, okay. it's, uh, <laughs> it's the jail.conf got so bad that I hide part of it in variable definitions, which kind of act like uh, functions. It's a mess. Understood. Uh, to do it in a jail.conf directly, it, would be, uh, it wouldn't be bad if you had it in a nice tool, 
mm-hmm. basically uh, something like XC, but doing it how I'm doing it is basically you all the guts are hang, hanging out <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, but um, it works. The mechanism is there, and you can have the nice things. Okay. Of well, anything else at this time? Materializing the uh, whiteouts and so on. Well, how about we call it there? Yeah. And some of us reunite tomorrow and in a week. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, those demos, and it's very exciting what you're both working on. I'll call it at 11.34 Pacific, 18.34 UTC, and I wish you a fantastic remainder of the week. Okay. All right, good luck. Bye. Thank you. Take care. See you, Jan. Yeah.